This week on CrossFeed. Facebook, the devil's website. USB, the devil's technology. The Mormon, Martin Luther. Britain adopts religious discrimination. And does your dinosaur play the organ? Hey everybody, welcome this week to CrossFeed News. I'm Pastor Jim Butler. Uh, since I'm paying attention here and he's off leaning off the side, I'll do first. Uh, talking to you from beautiful Dedham, Massachusetts on a wonderful weekend where Kansas City won, the Patriots won, and Brett Favre was completely humiliated by Green Bay. Yep, and that's my joy. <laughs> the Badgers did really well too this weekend, so... Um... So yeah, it was a it was a good weekend for me too. Although I didn't, oh, I suppose I should introduce myself. Pastor Dale Critchley, Shepherd of the Rich Lutheran Church, North Ridgeville, Ohio, outside of Cleveland. Um, but uh, no, I was I was thrilled, and I see I can't get the games um, very often around here. They just I don't know, not a lot of Packer fans in Cleveland. Um, <laughs> not that they have their own team really, um, <laughs> but. Uh, Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> Folks in the dog pound would not like to hear that. Hey, there's a reason there's a lot of Steelers fans around here. Ah. <laughs> so, but yeah, I have to be careful how I say that. <laughs> yeah. Well, you see, I um, um, was watching the Patriots game and then keep then earlier I was keeping an eye on the Kansas City game. And then, of course, at halftime they had the highlights. And that's where I saw that the, the Packers just humiliated Brett Favre. Mm -hmm. So, as of next week, Tom, or is it today? One or the other. Tom Brady has tied Favre's record for the most wins at home. <laughs> so, he's about ready to see if his, his Green Bay record go break, be broken in the next week or two. So, anyway, um, Hey, everybody, I hope you have a good Thanksgiving this week. Let's just start there. A lot of things to be thankful for, mm -hmm. uh, which means are we are we, gonna, are we podcasting next week? Haven't really thought about it. Okay. <laughs> oh, we'll have to think about it. And uh, we'll, 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 you'll find out. But um, things to be thankful for. Lots of things. Dale, what are you particularly going to be thankful for this year? Um, you know, it, it's, it's kind of a weird thing for us because um, – this is the second year that we've had Thanksgiving away from family. Um, but at the same time, we have got my wife and kids, and so we are a family. Um, and, uh, and I'm very thankful for them. Uh, I'm thankful for being at this great church. Uh, just really amazing things. Every time I turn around, something amazing happens. It's been just an incredible year that... Um, you know, sometimes things get get really tight, and you wonder, boy, what what's tomorrow going to bring? And and it's the sort of thing that if I didn't have a really awesome God who loves me incredibly, I'd be worried. Um, but instead, there's just been it's been one opportunity after another, and and every time, you know, you you so often hear people say every time um, one door closes, another one opens. Here, it's been every time a door closes, the same door opens back up, but wider. Um, Every time you think that oh this is going to fail, it all of a sudden it just turns around and it's better than it was before, um, and it's just it, it's it's really been amazing and um, and I, I I see things on the horizon that it, um, uh, of things that are going to be happening and or that I'm hoping will happen and that and um, but they they're very possible and I, and I just I can't wait to get there, you know. But I have to kind of pace myself and and. Uh, and things like that, and, and so I'm just I'm really excited about that, and you know all kinds of all kinds of personal stuff too, you know, with my family and things like that that I'm not really going to get into on the show, but I'm just I'm just incredibly blessed, you know. So. Yes, we are incredibly blessed. That's true. Oh gosh, I'm trying to think of where we should begin tonight. There are so many fun stories. Oh, let, let's talk. Let's let's begin with the worship wars, um, on a slightly different uh, note this time. Yeah, uh, and that is um, 
uh, I, because see, one thing I'm, I'm very thankful for is that we just put in a new organ at St. Luke's, um, this, this really fancy Allen organ, and we are very uh, uh, blessed to have an extremely gifted uh, organist. Uh, I mean, yeah, very, very gifted or uh, director of music. Um, and uh, who just wails on that thing. So uh, on the other hand, our last church, we had a beautiful uh, pipe organ that nobody could really play because nobody knew how. And that's really the problem we're having is that um, this article, just kind of what things that we knew is that there aren't that many people out there who play organ anymore. Mm-hmm. And I remember reading an article back in the 1980s, early 80s, when I was at the seminary. For the Amer- and it was uh, American Eagles of Organists that nobody's learning organ. In the next generation, a lot of churches are going to have to do without organists. Yeah. Yeah, well, this coming Sunday, we're not going to have organ. We're going to have guitar because we we have three organists. Um, but they sort of – they rotate. You now, it's not an, exactly a rotation. They um, – they all sort of fill in when available, which means most Sundays, you know, we've, we have an organist, um, but, uh, just, just, it sort of worked out that this, uh, coming Sunday for Sunday and event, and we don't have an organist. They're all, um, busy elsewhere and, and not available. And so, um, we're going to have acoustic guitar instead because mm-hmm. we wanted accompaniment. So. Say for a year and a half, uh, over a year, my last church we had lived with we had had lived with recorded music. Because so we're we using on Wednesday it. nights. Yep, we everything was just recorded. Uh, this is an article from um, ABC News, and just kind of brings that to to talk about how many churches are doing without organs. Uh, it starts off with a woman who's eighty years old who said, "I had to retire," and. Um, there are two young women who have taken over their musical duties, but they play digital piano, but they don't play the organ. And interesting enough, it's a one, it's, it's about a 200-member congregation. I don't know if that's worship attendance or membership, mm-hmm. but if that's worship attendance, I mean, that's a pretty, that's a pretty decent-sized church. Yeah. Um, and there aren't enough organists to fill all the open church positions. Yeah. Yeah, there's just – and it's, you know, it's declining. They said uh, – um, over the past 28 years, National Association of Schools of Music has seen the average number of students seeking a bachelor's degree in organ performance fall to 2.2 students per institution annually from 3.5. Um, the NASM accredits 633 institutions in the U.S., about 100 of which offer a bachelor's degree in organ performance. Right. I'm not sure I would accept. I don't sure if that's the best number. I mean, I'm, I don't know. I mean, I would talk to AGO. What what are their numbers look, looking like? Though they do talk to them a little bit. I don't know if I would. You know, uh, you know, because you don't have to have a master a bachelor's in organ performance. Right. Uh, our our organist his degree is in music education, but he's a formally trained organist, uh, and so I'm just not sure that's the best number I would go by. Yeah. Uh, but put it this way, he's doing a master's. <laughs> In I think it's sacred music at um, BU right now that is set aside for church musicians and organ uh, really set aside for organists and you know just getting a free ride because whoever endowed this thing a long time ago there's just no organist applying for it so they were able to give him a really good deal because yeah. it's there. Well, the church I was at in Iowa had two organists and um, which is pretty amazing, but it was. The way that that they did it was, um, it was the organist trained other people how to play organ. They'd find, uh, especially people that knew piano, and then they would teach them how to play organ. And so it was uh, sort of passed down from, in a sense, from generation to generation, not necessarily, um, you know, uh, mother-daughter sort of thing. Um, but... Uh, but that was how we stayed in organist. But I don't know how long that's going to continue there. You know, um, the one they've got now is our age, um, my age, um, and so she'll be there a while. You know, and 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 she won't be going anywhere either. She's a farmer's wife, so it's not like she's going to be anybody in their family's going to pick up a job and you know head off somewhere else. So. So they'll be good for another, you know, probably 
couple decades. And would have well, so yeah. I think a lot of smaller churches, and I, I would say church around two hundred is going to fall in this capacity, going to wind up with a problem in this whole situation simply because um, there is a um, uh, 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 you, you only need this person ten fifteen hours a week, so they need have to have another job, right? Um, and you know, so it can only be something that they really do on the side, unless of course you're like this one guy. Who, um, you know, out in uh, this church in um, uh, Worcester, um, you know, it's a thousand um, uh, member parish, and you know they're offering between seventy three and eighty five thousand dollars a year. Which, by the way, I should note, Worcester is cheaper to live in than 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 the Boston area, and that's more than I get paid with twenty five years experience in ministry. Uh, yeah. Okay, so just 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 to highlight this. As a matter of fact, that according to the executive director of the AGO, um, you know, uh, um, you know, it, you know, for uh, if you're a qualified organist, um, you know, you you know, for a full time with a bachelor's degree in organ performance, you should get between sixty three and eighty three thousand dollars a year. Well, that's absolutely insane. I don't know. I know very few churches that can pay that kind of money. Right. Yeah, and this whole thing. I mean, you know, we pay our organists, you know, sort of per service, and uh, and and I I know in fact that we pay below whatever the going rate is because there's organists that we've talked to that we've wanted to sort of add to our um, roster of organists that said, well, this is how much I get, and it was like double, <laughs> and but it was the going rate, and right. but the organists that we have. You know, for them, it's this is they see it as a ministry, and you know, this is something that that I'm doing for um, you know to glorify God, and um, and not for my own benefit. And right. so, yeah, it's it's not about the money. <clears throat> but, so uh, uh, yeah. it's it's definitely an issue. And you know, okay, so in years to come, though, you have well. There's still a lot of um, of traditional churches out there that still want to use organ, though, and and that's going oh, to continue. Kind of a... um, you know, there's still churches being planted that are using traditional uh, music and and things like that, and um, so that need is going to continue. Uh, maybe not as much as in years past, because you've got a lot of churches that are going to more uh, contemporary styles and things like that. Um, but uh i mean i tell you if you're a a college student or 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 anybody really that's um looking to if you know if you play piano and you're looking to pick up a little money on the side um you know if you can get some training and learn how to play organ too um there's plenty of churches that would appreciate having you around Oh, I, 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 I tell the kids in my confirmation class, the ones who are learning piano, I said, look, go upstairs, talk to the director of music after Sunday, tell him you want to learn organ. He'll teach you. He'll charge you, but he'll teach you. And when you get out of high school and you go away to college, you can go to almost any church and, you know, say, you know, I play organ and pick yourself up uh, $150 a week extra mm -hmm. because they're going to be looking for somebody. And they're just not out there. I said, you know, uh, um, um, and had one kid, and he was, played piano and wanting to go, wanting to be a Lutheran church teacher, Lutheran teacher, and told told her, I said, learn organ, because if you can teach and you can play organ, you can write your ticket. You you will have more churches interested in you, and you can sit back and look at the one who's going to offer you the best price, and you can say, look, there's a couple other churches interested in me. How much? Let's up the salary a little bit mm -hmm. because they just don't exist. Yeah. So you're crazy not to. Um, of course, I had to kind of laugh. <clears throat> I probably get myself into trouble here, but that one of the people they interviewed was Jack Cashion at uh, Redeemer Lutheran in St. Clair Shores. Now, Jack, for those of you guys who don't know him, um, has left the Missouri Synod, and he is um, 
uh, uh, very, very opinionated about how things should be. And I just kind of thought it was interesting. It, yeah, he was looking for a or- secretary and organist for 38000 a year, including benefits. Now, I'm not sure if that 38000 includes the benefits or if benefits are in addition to the 38000 I have an idea inc- including must be a package deal. I got news for you. For a full-time secretary and organist, that ain't much money. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Huh. And it's interesting to me because he's had two or three deaconesses, uh, all who have left because they, <clears throat> well, anyway, uh, 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 who are organists in his congregation. Um, yeah, we won't say much more about him, but I thought it was funny that of all people they could interview, he was one of the people they interviewed. Um, but maybe what they really need to do is advertise this on Facebook. Mm. Maybe yeah, not. but then, then churches would never find it. All right, so... We've got, um, this was interesting, and uh, this was a story that I heard about, um, and then once I actually read the story, my thoughts on it changed a bit. Um, so this is in uh, the town of Neptune, um, which is in New Jersey, in uh, near Monmouth, um, uh, Reverend Cedric Miller said 20 couples among the 1,100 members of his Living Word Christian Fellowship Church have run into marital trouble over the last six months after a spouse connected with an ex-flame over Facebook. All right. Does that mean that 20 different couples, every single one of those couples connected with an ex-flame over Facebook? That seems kind of extreme. <laughs> um, But... All right, and so he is ordering about 50 married church officials to delete their accounts with Facebook or resign from the leadership positions. Uh, he previously asked married congregants to share their login information with their spouses. Now plans to suggest they give up Facebook altogether. All right. Um, and, you know, and when I first saw this, that, you know, I, I saw a comment about it that, that kind of echoed what I was thinking. And that was adultery was a long, was around a long time before Facebook was. You don't need Facebook if you're going to be adulterous. Um, you know, and, and frankly, if you're, um, if you're not, if, if you are going to be faithful to your spouse, then whether you're on Facebook or not is irrelevant. Um, but then I, I started looking at this article and looking at the situation here. And while for most people, Facebook is fine, it seems like this particular community has a problem. The problem isn't Facebook, but they're using Facebook to exacerbate the problem. So, I mean, if you have 20 couples... And I, it doesn't say, well, yeah, in the past six months, 20 couples in six months that have run into marital problems in a church of that size. There's something else going on there. Well, number one, I mean, like statistically, okay? I mean, if you got 1,100 members, how many couples do you, are you going to have? There's a good chance you could have 300 couples in that church. Mm-hmm. You know, well, if you got 300 couples in that church, you got 20 of them coming forward, you know, saying there's an issue here. And it doesn't say how serious the issue is either. I mean, it could be just one being suspicious of the other person. Um, you know, so, you know, it doesn't say how, you know, are they just, you know, I, I'm just you know concerned that he's, you know, hooked up with her or whatever uh, or him. She's hooked up with him. Um, so, you know, it. it it may not be that high a percentage. You know, it's 20 couples. We don't know what the percentage actually is. That's one thing. Number two, this guy should know that you don't need to have Facebook to have adultery. He should know that very well. Because, you see, way before Facebook existed, have you ever heard uh, two's company, three's a crowd? <laughs> not with him. So, <clears throat> he... In the uh, Daily Mail in the UK, there was an article that 
came up after this, in which um, <clears throat> it has come to my attention that a very painful part of my past has resurfaced. Miller wrote in an email sent Friday that he and his wife were involved with <clears throat> at least a threesome, possibly a foursome, with himself, his wife, his assistant pastor, and possibly the assistant pastor's wife. Oh, that's not right. No. Oh, wow. Oh, so he wants to get him off of Facebook <laughs> so they don't find out anything else. Ah. <laughs> uh. Yeah. So you see, this kind of throws a whole different light. Did they talk about there's maybe something going on in this church? Wow. Yeah. Huh. Okay. And Miller said his wife had an extramarital affair with the church assistant and that he was a president at many of their meetings. And sometimes the assistant's wife was there, too. Hmm. He added, we would talk and laugh and play and just beyond what was appropriate. Huh. Yeah. Well, yeah, that puts a whole different spin on it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so so here's the thing. All right, I get nervous anytime a pastor tells, um, especially an entire congregation, um, that they shouldn't be using a tool that, um, you know, a website or whatever that in and of itself is neutral. All right. Um, there's nothing inherently sinful about Facebook. There's nothing inherently good about it. All right. It's a tool. It's, and it can be used for good or bad. All right. Now in our family, does my wife have my login information? Well, she knows the passwords I usually use. So if she really, and actually, all she'd have to do is go on my computer, and it's set to automatically log in. So anytime right. she Same wanted here. to, you know, she could. It's not, and 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 she knows that. And and when we both got on Facebook, we both did it. Uh, I guess I got on first, but you know, it, it was it was just because she hadn't gotten around to it yet, um, and she was on shortly afterward, and you know, and 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 so we. Immediately, and and I, I think it was probably me telling her, "Hey, you know, check it out." And, um, but so we've got nothing to hide from each other, and for that matter, we we can access each other's um, email accounts if we want to, and we use Gmail so that you know it's everything's archived there, and and that. So we've got nothing to hide from each other. Um, right. I mean. I, I mean, you know, when my wife comments on something, I often, you know, well, receive the, you know, Janice comment, Janice Butler commented on this, um, you know, and um, now, can this stuff be a problem? Yes, going away from 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 the pastor here, the American Academy of Matrimonial Lawyers. I love that t t title. Um, says eighty one percent of its members have used or have been faced with evidence plucked from Facebook, MySpace, Twitter, and other social, social networking sites in divorce cases over the last five years. Well, that would make perfect sense. People are stupid. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they're not very good at covering themselves up, and they would use this kind of, you know, it would not be hard. Just like it used to be that they would, you know, take up evidence on, 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 on email, you know, of stuff. Um, right. But, you know, if... if <sighs> If you're unhappy in your marriage or if you happen to be at a bad spot in your life, you know, uh, uh, and depressed, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't take anything to begin to develop a relationship with someone, you know, especially, you know, a lot of times that they're old flames. Well, you forgot about the reason you broke up with this person. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. You know, and... Um, you know, and sometimes, or, or it can just be somebody that you're developing, and, and, and you don't realize you're going along uh, beyond a, a state of appropriateness. Right. You know, there's um, the book that I, the, I actually make it required reading to everybody that I um, do marriage counseling, uh, pre-marriage counseling with, um, and and that is a book. It's called Hedges, or also called Loving Your Marriage Enough to Protect It. And, and it talks about sort of setting up these boundaries 
that are proactively avoiding um, different situations, like mm-hmm. um, like if not having opposite sex friends that are not like couple friends or um, or, or something like that, or, or that you don't get together with uh, with both your spouse, you know, um, that's where sort of you have an opposite sex friend that you that your spouse never gets together with, you know, right. Um, or, Although you, you, you might through work, I mean, you might be somebody you know at work, but you don't get together outside of work. Right, right. Um, you know, and and just it really, it's just being aware and not naive that um, that you need to be aware of the fact that um, that those sort of relationships that you need to keep a guard on those and 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 make sure that that relationship doesn't expand into anything that it shouldn't. And, right. you know, even things like, you know, this book even suggests that if, you know, oh, well, she's, um, she's wearing a pretty dress that you don't say you look nice in that dress. You say that dress looks nice on you. So it emphasizes the dress, not the person, you know, and it's, it's subtle little things like that. And yeah, that, you know, you might say that's a little extreme or whatever, but, um, but you know, it's it's just it's little things where things can be misinterpreted, and um, and and that's how a lot of a lot of marriages um, end up breaking up because of these relationships developing is because one person misinterprets the other person what they said or, or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, Not to mention, to take care of a lot of sexual harassment lawsuits. <laughs> yep. <laughs> no. Uh, but yeah, I just thought it was. I mean, I, I mean, he's not all wrong here, but I think he's going a little bit too far. Yeah, mm-hmm. I've managed to. I, I mean, I, I, and by the same token, I mean, up here in Massachusetts, there was a thing, um, a school district that told its teachers that if any student was found to be friends with them on Facebook or anything, that you know the teacher would be fired. And I thought that was again just a little bit too extreme. I, again, depending on what you know, you happen to be communicating with the student through Facebook. But um, I know, um, you know, the kids who are in uh, high school, my high, you know, I've had a confirmation I have at the camp. I say, here's my Facebook information. If you want to friend me, fine. You know, but I won't friend. If I, see, but I won't look for you, and I won't friend you. It's something a little scary about a 50 year old guy friending a, a teenage kid. But if you just want to keep in touch with me, let me know what you're doing in life and stuff. That's fine. I'd be glad to, you know, I'll accept you as a friend. And I said, but I won't ever, you know, but don't, don't expect me ever to write on your wall or anything because I won't. Unless, I, you know, unless it's getting time for camp. And I might say, you know, I look forward to seeing you at camp next week. But other than that, you know, but it does give me an idea. It gives me the opportunity to keep a track on what the, what the kids are doing and stuff. Mm-hmm. And, um, and questions that they might have that I can write down for things at camp for next year. But, um, but again, I thought... Okay, I understood where the school district is coming from, but I thought what they were wanting to do was a little bit extreme. Yep. Um, just one more thing on Facebook. You know, as a as a pastor, I highly recommend that all pastors get on Facebook and send a friend request to all your members. All right. Now, you know, yeah, the camp thing is one thing, but your members, man, that's how I stay in touch with. You know, we've we've got. Remember, Jason, if you're watching this, he's over in Kuwait, um, and he's on Facebook. I can still stay in touch with him while he's in the service over in Kuwait, all right? You got members that are in college, all right, that can stay in touch with Inactive members, you know, people that, that aren't coming to church. I've never met him in person, <laughs> but I've talked to him on Facebook, <laughs> you know, and, um, and I'm... I told at the beginning of the year, I told our preschool families that I was going to send out friend requests to them. They don't have to accept them, but if they want to, they can, you know, and, um, and, and I offer that as just a way to, to stay, um, to get to know their families better and, and stuff. And, um, but man, it really gives you such a, a great, um, way to be connected with, the people of your congregation that are on Facebook, and you know what, they're on Facebook. Oh, huge, huge, yeah, 
huge huge numbers of people are on Facebook. Yeah, that's for sure. So it's just, I mean, man, it's you want to get a hold of somebody. <laughs> it's for a lot of people, it's easier than leaving a message on their answering machine, and and more effective. They'll get back to you sooner. It's true. So now um, that we know that the that the uh, 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 um, Facebook is the devil's website, let's go on to talk the devil's tool, the USB. <laughs> this, this is so great. All right. All right. I, sometimes we go from the sublime to the ridiculous. Yeah. Here we... All right. So we actually, actually, in order to, this was covered by a whole bunch of bloggers, but I wanted to find the original article, uh, which is in Portuguese. So thank you to Google Translate. Um, it's it's not perfect, uh, the translation, but... Um, but it, we got the gist of it. All right. So this is in Brazil. Um, there is uh, an evangelical cult, Peace Beloved of the Lord. And um, it forbids its followers to use any USB technology by, by contending that it uses a symbol that makes apology to the devil. Because if you've ever seen the USB symbol, it looks kind of like a trident. Right, and um, so let's see. Uh, I don't have it here, but um, it so and you know, well here, here, let's see, put that up there. There we go. Yeah, I can see it. Yep. Okay, so yeah, it looks like a trident, and the um, the trident is used to torture souls um, who've gone to hell. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, have you ever seen that? You know, you know which uh, which passage of the Bible he's referring to, right? <laughs> oh, me either. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I I thought I always thought it was the symbol of Poseidon, and that it said I'm supposed to immerse this in water. So it's okay, <laughs> you know. Yeah, I know. That's that's what I think of too. You know. <laughs> That, that's a little shout out to all the Percy Jackson of the Olympian fans out there. Okay, you know it, it, that uh, that was actually when I mentioned this in my household, that actually came up. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, I, I I'm reading all five books. I, I'm I'm book, I just finishing up book number four, so I got one more book to go in that series. So, uh, yeah, so uh, you know. Uh, um, um, Uber geek. Hey, today I preached on Harry Potter and the Three Unforgivable Curses. <laughs> so. Yeah, we've talked about those Harry Potter services. <laughs> yeah, I know. So, but anyway, I mean, so so Uber geek here and an overgrown kid. But this this is just this is just crazy. I guess they won't um, be having any screenings of the Little Mermaid at their church. <laughs> but Bluetooth is okay because blue is the color of Jesus' eyes. <laughs> I guess he has blonde hair too. <laughs> yeah, I wonder if this pastor's descendant from anybody from Germany. <laughs> yeah, he showed up in like forty eight or forty nine or something like that. You know, because because you know, so many Middle Eastern Jews have blue eyes. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's yeah. another passage in the Bible that I can't find. <laughs> Well, you know, I mean, it is a um, a cult, okay? That's the, that is the term that they use. It, you know, I mean, the, 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 the very, you know, I don't know what word there in Portuguese that they're translating cult, but boy, it's a fitting one. Yeah, Uh-oh. yeah. You know, well, this this reminds me of remember we had that article a few weeks ago about like all these was it in Africa where all these these churches are popping up all over the place with all these goofy names. Yes. All right. So you know. This guy's calling himself an apostle, and um, you know, and it's this peace beloved of the Lord, which just you know sounds just like all those other ones. Um, well, okay, it's not as goofy as some of them, but um, but you know, it's this guy starts up a church, and and this is what happens when you have a church that gets started by someone with no theological training that just decides that they're going to start a church. You know, well. God called me and said, start a church, even though yeah. I don't know the first thing about the Bible. And, you know, I mean, it, just the fact that he's spouting off about this stuff that has absolutely nothing to do with the Bible. 
right? Yeah. It would be one thing to say, okay, don't use Dragon naturally speaking um, uh, voice recognition software because dragons are evil in the Bible. I mean, that would still be goofy, but it would at least have something to do with the Bible. <laughs> or, 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 the, or the woman who didn't want uh, the, the, the driver's license plate that says 666 on it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we, you know, we've had those things, but I like this. You know, uh, um, now this shows that all users of this technology are actually worshippers of Satan. Yep. So, so. crud. The, you know, the the microphone I'm using <laughs> is a USB microphone. You know oh. what it is? He actually isn't. This guy's actually in league with Bill Gates. Bill Gates wants to go back to parallel printers because, you know, you know, USB, you know, all all old Windows machines all use the parallel, you know, where. So what was it that Apple used? Uh, oh, serial. Uh, yeah. Serial. Yeah. Ours are all serial printers. Yeah. And, see, and all theirs. Nice. And, 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 yeah, we're all, we use serial printers and they use parallel printers. But now with USB, you know, it's all common so you see he wants to go back to using his proprietary technology of the, of the parallel printer see i just want to know what this guy thinks about firewire because <laughs> maybe see that's maybe, a trinitarian symbol yeah that's, you know the little things come into one so well i thought you know well that's true it's got a trinitarian symbol and fire it is the connector of the holy spirit hey, God bless, brilliant. see yeah, so so that's okay. Yeah. But, but too yeah. bad. Uh, too, too 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 bad. Apple did away with FireWire there for a while. You know, it's it's. Uh, and is there and 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 the symbol of Apple is an apple with a bite out of it. Uh-huh. Oh, oh man. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, as long as you're gonna go with with uh, you know your sort of biblical artwork instead of what the Bible itself says. <laughs> and the first an Apple. Apple one sold for six hundred and sixty six dollars. Yeah, it did. <laughs> there is evil there that does not sleep. But Jim, I was thinking our crossfeed website is red. Mm. Not blue like our savior's eyes. <laughs> no. <laughs> Actually I think it's magenta. <laughs> I think it's more maroon, but <sighs> Man. What a maroon. <laughs> anyway, so uh <laughs> Oh man. Oh, oh sorry. All right. Oh, you know, we okay. got flack a, a a long time ago. Um it's it's still there if you go ahead and look at our reviews on on you on uh the iTunes podcast directory. It's still there that you know that we're just sort of making fun of stuff and that, but all right, you know what, this guy's a whack job. <laughs> Sometimes it's just you don't need to make fun of it. You just need to tell what it says, and yeah. that's it. No, it's it's all there is to it. I mean, um, the big question is why are people listening to him? Why are people listening to us? <laughs> I'm trying to figure out. Well, that's probably a bigger question. Both of them, anyway. So, um, oh, let's go on to Britain. All right. Okay, um, this is such a clear case of religious discrimination and how it could be ruled not well. In Britain, I can understand how it could be ruled not to be because it's such a secular place. It's like, you know, trying to get this in, in Massachusetts, you probably get the same answer. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and in fact, this has been um, covered in the United States and is always, they always rule uh, against, they, basically in favor of religious discrimination. Right. Right. So anyway, there's a woman named Dr. Sheila Matthews, who is 50 years old. Uh, so she is my age. And uh, now it doesn't say how long she has been working for the North Hampshire. Um, uh, 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 um, yeah, this North 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 Hampshire County Council. Um, but anyway, uh, she had. You know recommended that same-sex couples um, not adopt. Right. And she actually, you know, it's, it's, it's important to note here 
that she was out in the open about it. And she said, basically, she said, look, all right, I have a religious bias here. And so all I'm asking for is that when it comes down to voting on which, um, sort of deciding which couple is going to get a given child, all right, when it, when they sort of have it narrowed down to a few, I'd, I'd just like to abstain from the vote in those situations because I'm biased. You know, she's basically recusing herself. And so they fired her for it. Sometimes I just don't understand human behavior. Right. Um, and she said, um, um, yeah, she says, um, as a Christian, my faith leads me to believe that a marriage between a man and woman in a faithful monogamous sexual relationship is the most appropriate environment for the upbringing of children. I believe that a same-sex relationship is not the best, most healthy environment in which to raise children. And so, and, and you know, she's, in, in her case, she's saying, this is because of my Christian belief. It's not, you know, you can argue statistics or, or whatever else, okay. But she's saying, this is my Christian belief, that I really don't believe that this is the best thing. And, um... And and so since I'm interested in the what giving the kids the best we can, then I'm going to, you know, I'm going to lean toward putting them with um, heterosexual couples, because. But even at that point, she said, "I'll just I just want to abstain." Right. You know, uh, uh, um, that that's it. You know, I just want to you know, say you know I'm not interested. Um, uh, um, you know, and then you know, for this thing, she was fired. So apparently, she was dismissed from this council. So apparently, she sued them and she lost. Um, the judge says this case falls fairly and squarely on its facts. Um, you know, the judge you said know. that um, there's no evidence that Dr. Matthews is treated differently from any other panel member who might request to abstain from voting, or that she was specifically discriminated against on the basis of her Christianity. Okay. No, she was she was discriminated against based on her beliefs, which stem from her Christianity, which led her to request the the, the right to abstain on right. these things. So it absolutely had to do with her Christianity, right? Right. This is I think there's been some talk recently about the difference between freedom of religion and freedom of worship. Um. That. Freedom of of worship is that you have the the right to um, you know once a week or however often a week to gather with other people that believe the same thing as you and and worship in whatever mode that you want. Um, it, whereas freedom of religion, the point is it extends into every aspect of your life. All right, which any religion worth its salt should. Because we're talking about worldview here, we're not talking. We're not just talking about something that I do to get a, a spiritual recharge, okay? And so, but a lot of times, this question of freedom of religion ends up falling um, by the wayside, and, it, and it's basically it's freedom of worship. And so, anytime it involves a person having to make a choice that that is that actually has an impact on society, however small, that uh, she is, uh, in this case, um, but in general, the um, they're basically told, no, you can't exercise your religious faith um, outside of those... Um, outside of the, the walls of the church. This is just like the pharmacists that we've talked about who were forced into uh, dispensing the birth control pill. Like that was actually worse because it was their own private practice and they were being forced. Um, it was, you know, they owned the pharmacy. But, <clears throat> but you know, and here she's a government employee, so, that, you know, you could argue a difference there. But... You know, see, I, I, I'm, I'm not sure exactly what her role is because the first paragraph calls her an adoption advisor. So I'm not sure if she's like a social worker, you know, um, you know, 
yeah, at the same time, she has some sort of doctorate degree because she's Dr. Sheila Matthews. I don't know, you know, exactly, you know, it's not real clear exactly what her job is, um, you know, and, and when they, you know, would sit here and, and have these, um, you know, these, these um, um, meetings and stuff, what they do, um, you know. And this, by the way, was was not a um, law court. It was a... Um, uh, uh, employment court. It looks like it was more like a, uh, like a, uh, what we call the the National Labor Relations Board or something like that, mm-hmm. uh, rather than actual uh, actual court. Also, I don't know what the law in England is in terms of freedom of religion. That's true. They don't have you know our constitution, so, so. I don't know. So you know, but but you're right. I mean, in America, it it is almost coming to this idea. Of, yeah, you have the freedom to do to practice your religion inside the walls of your church, but don't let it out on the public square. Right. Uh, we're going back to a very much Roman mindset that religion should be this private thing and not this thing that you actually, actually, really affect your life. Mm-hmm. You know. Um, right. So. <clears throat> yeah, it, I don't know. It's it's a sad thing, and I'm, I don't know, I I, I foresee it only getting worse. Oh, it's definitely only going to get worse. It's definitely, but then Jesus warned us of that. Mm-hmm. So you know, I mean, I, everyone's like, well, it's kind of funny because uh, you know, the people are talking about how you know persecutions rising in America and 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 in the western west and th- things like this because we hold unpopular views. And I'm like, um, isn't that what Jesus always said? You know that we you know we would be persecuted for how we're holding some unpopular views. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, uh, it, it, it is time now for our weekly gay Mormon update. <laughs> Um, nail, it just works property. out that way. It's not like I'm specifically looking for it. I didn't really think about it until afterward. Well, we've already had a gay story. We just finished one. Yeah, so now it's time for the you know for the Mormon to be in, to be added in. So um, I didn't include the story about the um, the uh, base jumpers jumping off the Mormon building. <laughs> Now, that would probably been more interesting than this. Well, I thought it was, I like that one. It, it was actually a more popular story, but, um, but I thought it wasn't really a religion story. <laughs> it just happened to be a Mormon building that they were jumping off. See, then we could have pictures of Batman because, you know, in, in, in The Dark Knight, it says he's going base jumping. You know, that's why he wants the outfit. <laughs> so anyway, um, uh, so this is from – what is what what is what magazine is this? Uh, I don't know. I, I just – copied it but religious um, digest or um anyway she's a um uh, this woman who writes it it was raised it says in a conservative mormon home um but based on the way she ends the article she's no longer a conservative mormon <laughs> no yeah a religion dispatches that's what it is um and yeah it doesn't strike me as an overly conservative site anyway but uh anyway so um apparently there's this book in within the LDS called the Ch- Church Handbook of Instructions, and it's a two-volume, 400-page tome detailing church doctrine, policies, and procedures. I like it. You call it a Mormon Talmud, uh, so I'm not sure that's what's in the Talmud. But anyway, um, now she says both volumes are secret, but this guy, um, one of the commenters say uh, – yeah, uh, I says, uh, 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 you know, well, the the second book isn't, but the first book, um, you know, very few people see. But anyway, somebody who's going by the name of Martin Luther has um, scan whoever whoever he was had it, scanned it, put it up on the internet in PDF, and somebody else took the PDF and turned it into a searchable database, so you can find out anything that Mormons believe on any topic. <laughs> Yeah. So the yeah the second book um, I think you mentioned in the article they were actually the the church was actually planning to post that on that one online, um, but yeah this guy kind of beat him to the punch. But he also threw yeah. the first one that's the the sort of secret private one. Um, you know this is really the people ask is Mormonism a cult? All right. Let me tell you something. All right. The Lutheran Church Missouri Synod has a handbook. Okay. Um, it's public. I don't know if it's online. 
Um, yes, it is. You can go to lcms.org, look under um, Commission on Constitutional Matters, and you can download it right there. Okay. Um, the one uh, – it's kind of in limbo right now because of all the stuff that we adopted over the summer has to be put in, all the new bylaws. So it's being re-edited in the new edition. Mm-hmm. So – but it's – I mean – Every every church has one, and and anybody that wants to look at it, man, if somebody came by and, and and wanted to look at our copy, I'd be like, okay, I'm not using it, you know. <laughs> you know, it's it's a reference thing. Jim has half of it memorized, but um, <laughs> I'm sorry, most of it memorized. <laughs> sorry. sorry, I didn't want to insult you. You know, I don't know. Maybe you got it all memorized. <laughs> well, I used to, but we, we adopted all these new changes, so I'm not sure what some of it reads anymore. But uh, yeah, I used to be able to, you know, be able to to, to kind of rapidly find what I needed and to correct people, and they'd say things, and I'm like, no, this is this is what it says. So that's my. Uh, I'm secretary of the district. That means I'm automatically the guru of the handbook. I'm supposed to know what it says, yeah. so I can correct. Which is people. great for me because if I need to know something. I don't look it up. I just ask Jim. <laughs> I'm not stupid enough to find to look it up for him and tell him that the answer is. It's called crowdsourcing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but okay, so the thing is, though, that this book um, it says that the um, the inaccessibility of the CHI to regular members only heightened its power and significance so much that anyone who could quote authoritatively from it during a Sunday school lesson, for example, held a special sort of status in the community. In Mormonism, the demands of lay ministerial service do convey certain privileges as well. Ooh, you know, you get to find out the secret handshake and, you know, the... <laughs> Is it a cult? Um... Any church that hides some of their teachings from you until you reach a certain level, guess what? That's pretty much the definition of a cult right there. If they're not open with you about everything that, that they teach and how they do things and, yeah. and that, um, yeah, that's a cult. So now, you know, a lot of Mormons don't think of it that way. They just see it as more of a hierarchical top-down kind of thing. But, all right, now you look at the Roman Catholic Church, they're a hierarchical, top-down sort of organization, but all of their um, all of their teachings and everything, it's all very readily available. Their catechism is so ridiculously long that, you know, there's no way that, that anybody can read through the whole thing. <laughs> well, I, I mean, even, I don't know, I don't know, okay, even we Lutherans, though, can be said to to have some you know, secret teachings. I mean, uh, remember a few years ago, um, Michelle Bachman got blindsided by the people who you know, brought up, you know, that uh, according to the Lutheran Confessions, the Pope is the Antichrist. And, you know, what's with you, Lutherans? Why are you so anti-Catholic? And she said, we don't believe that. You know, and of course, <laughs> it all was very quickly corrected by the leader, by the the, the Wisconsin Senate hierarchy, saying, "Oh, yes, we do too." Um, but you know, she, I, I mean, I wouldn't say that's a secret teaching. Yeah, but it's, it's certainly not something that we we I think we go out and you know, uh, 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 put on our church doors by any means. And when somebody is comes to visit, say, "Oh, by the way, did you know we believe?" I mean, you know, it's not, it's not my first topic of conversation with most people, right? And, um, and you know, and that's and only I would because. Even, it, People get the wrong idea of what we're talking right. about, and yeah. and even okay, I'm going to take take a uh, this 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 may cause me my Missouri Synod uh, uh, a membership card here, but I'm kind of think that might have been more of a historical judgment than a necessarily a. I understand where they're coming from. I'm just not sure I completely buy into that one. Yeah, we're in trouble. <clears throat> yeah, we're not going to get into. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, I mean, I can, I can make the argument and stuff very well. I understand the argument very well, but I just think it might be a little bit more of a historical judgment than, than, uh, than, than, than necessarily scripture in that case. So, uh, when I look at the World Council of Churches and some other groups out there, I think there's a lot of people out there who. Well, I, I see. 
I, I've never really, even from reading in the, um, we're talking about the, um, yeah, um, the, what's the first word? I'm drawing a blank all of a sudden on the, um, the power and primacy of the Pope. Yeah. Treatise. Treatise. That's the word. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> I can't even think what it's called. Um, but, uh, yeah, it was part of the small cult articles and, um, I, I, I've never gotten from that, that, that it was, that it was insisted that that was the only one. Yeah, that could be. But anyway, anyway, a, back to our to topic here. Yeah. But so. if you really want to know all about that, all you have to do is, you know, go down to the library, public library, look up book of Concord, probably one on there. Um, or you can go to Barnes and Noble. There might be an edition there. Or you can um, look online. There's yeah, yeah, yeah. You can book of Concord dot org. Mm-hmm. Uh, the whole thing's right there, and it's not secretly scanned by somebody and put up. It was you know a whole bunch of people put it up there yeah. for discussion. Anyway, so you know, but but still, there are some things that we you probably don't go into right away, and probably if you told you know a whole bunch of your people in your congregation this, they'd all look at you real funny and go, you know, what are you talking what are you, about? <laughs> what are you talking about? Right. right. So, uh, um, so uh, you know, there are certain things that you know, you're not necessarily going to tell everybody for for whatever reason. Uh, but this seems to be a little bit more. This seems to almost be a little bit. But what's what really she seems to be getting in is talking about changes that were made. Mm-hmm. You know, and apparently, you know, the big thing was, and and it'd be nice if they talked about, it, was that uh, um, there were changes that were made uh, uh, in their area about uh, homosexuality. Um. You know, um, and but it, she didn't say what the changes are. Right, right. But you can go you look at them yourself. <laughs> yeah, I know. But it says the buzz among bloggers and web journals quickly diverged around changes to the section of the handbook dealing with homosexuality. One Utah television station even ran a nightly news segment suggesting a link between the changes, Proposition 8, and the protests following El- Elder Boyd K. Packer's controversial conference talk on homosexuality be nice if she told us what those changes were yeah well she seems to sort of be uh um she she refers to um the <clears throat> the lds church the mormon church um sort of she may not be a conservative mormon but she's still a mormon right and so you know She's got to be careful what she says. You know, I mean, you, this another thing about Mormonism is that they're not real big on people asking a lot of questions. You know, especially if the question is is seen as challenging um, decisions of the hierarchy. Uh, yeah. On the other hand, I mean, come on, this paragraph, folks in some online LDS communities we weekly call it criminology. Uh, not that the LDS church is, well, the Soviet regime, but a church that prides its opacity and its inner workings is experiencing an unusual level of uninvited transparency. I mean, okay. <laughs> Does that sound like she's like really digging into her thesaurus to keep herself out of trouble but still trying to say what she wants to say? <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, come on. Um, and, uh, 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 you know, and... Um, yeah, I mean, it comes real clear here what's what, what she get what you know her opinion. But it would be nice if she'd actually said what the changes are. Um, um, you know, she says that the, the Mormon folks said, "Hey, look, we were working on this back in two thousand seven. You know, we were working before any of this stuff happened. Um, you know, but it's interesting again how top down it is. Here's the new edition, the uh, our glorious handbook, and some other things are were written." You know, are are voted on at our convention, mm-hmm. and uh, well, yeah. some of the changes have to be voted on. You know, for constitution, have to be voted on second time, um, and you know the uh, uh, you know, and we choose to subscribe to L- the Lutheran teachings. Nobody forces those on us and says, you know, well, you know, uh, uh, it's our choice what we want to to you know, it's our choice to subscribe to those things. Right, right, and even you know the. Um all right. So, for instance, a number of years ago, our um, we it was 
decided that it would really be best for churches to go to every Sunday communion. All right. And, and so that recommendation was made and it was voted on and, and, um, you know, that, w- that recommendation was passed, but there's still plenty of churches that don't have every Sunday communion and, right. you know, nobody's leaning on them going, Hey, you know, it's just, Hey, we think this is a good idea. You know, now there are certain things that if you want to continue to be a Missouri Synod Lutheran congregation, there are certain basic things you need to hold to sort of the essence of what it means to be um, a Lutheran. Okay. Um, and so if a, if a church, you know, really drastically st- strays from that, um, you know, they're going to be, there's going to be some discussion about, you know, do you really want to continue to be a part of a, of a church body that doesn't really represent who you are, you know? Um, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, you know, everything's very open and, um, and yeah, the fact that it was, it was discussed any changes now, of course, you know, you talk about changes to their, um, handbook and it, 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 it's a whole nother thing because they believe in continuing revelation. And so, and, and not just continuing revelation the way that say a Pentecostal would see it to say, well, God gave us more information or something like that, but literally God changed his mind and, um, you know, and he, what he used to say, he doesn't say that anymore. Um, and, and so what's new trumps the old and, when you get to that, even though the Bible said, God, in the Bible, God says, am I a man that I should change? It's implied. No. Um, and they but, say, yes. Yeah. They say, yeah. God was once a man and he can change. Yeah. That's, exactly, that, that's exactly what that means. You know? So one time, you know, uh, uh, blacks weren't allowed in the priesthood. 1970s, God changed his mind and they are. Right. Yeah. One time, They allowed polygamy. And then all of a sudden, God changed his mind. And that became Pastor Miller and his Neptune group. They (laughs) out there in Neptune, you know. (laughs) Oh, very nice, Blaine. (laughs) You know, so, you know, I mean, you know, it all just changes. So. Okay, so you're probably getting tired of my snarky sense of humor here. And send your complaints to Dale at <laughs> <laughs> to podcast at crossfeednews dot com. All right. And speaking of which, we did get some feedback. Yeah. Oh man. My old friend George. Our old friend George. Uh, who writes? Wow, Pastor Jim has quite a shirt display. Remember last week I wore my Bahama shirt, so um I'll have to show you some I have to wear my Hawaiian shirt that my wife made me a few years ago sometime and that that's even wilder. Uh, thanks. I got and read through Lutheranism 101. A lot of good content in there. Thank Pastor Jim for recommending it. Um, it really is worth your time. Um, I actually, a friend of mine was wondering what Lutherans taught, and I bought it for him and sent it to him because I thought it was such a good book. Uh, hey, if we're to use gimmicky evangelism to attract new people to the church, maybe free Wi-Fi would work better than a free electric car charging station. I like that idea. Uh, works for the airport. But I think preaching the gospel and telling people about Jesus works many times better. You every day we walk with the Lord is so darn much fun. The Lord continue to bless your podcast. Um, and uh, thank you, George. Always good to hear from you. Uh, though I'm not sure how much good we did tonight. <laughs> I know. I'm, I'm wondering about his suggestion, though. About preaching the gospel? I don't know. That sounds pretty way out there to me. I'd rather preach about Facebook. Hey, <laughs> God watch over, bless you, and give you a joyous Thanksgiving. Good night, everybody. Thanks, George. God bless.